anybody that comments in the question box right now. So just comment. You don't have to put your email address. It will go to the email address that you registered with. Now, some of you may be wondering, where's yesterday's? Probably as you were logging in, it was going out to you because it's 24 hours at least that it takes the system to start rendering and you will get a copy of this. I'll tell you when to ask for the copy of the slides, but this is the copy of the recording. You can slow me down and speed me up as you need to, but do know for the in-depth Q&A, I do turn the recording off and that's only for the people in the room. It honors their privacy as well as gives them the opportunity to really get going deeper into their questions, okay? so. Let's talk about how we can reach customers online. Remember, really thinking about what is it that we can apply from what we learned today so you can reach them and grow your business. Make sense? Yep, everybody, I see this. Yes, okay, perfect, Terry, perfect. I see everybody's comments there. It's good for you to find the question box because only those who commented will get a recording. All right, here we go. When you want to find things, where do you go? I mean, I think we've already covered that pretty well in the intro, but we go here when we want to know, go do or buy. 74% of us go to a mobile device first and we Google it. It's a noun and a verb, isn't it? Right? So as we know that people are there, it's important for us as small businesses to understand how search works. People go there, even local people who you might just be less than a mile down the road for them, they're still going to see who is there locally and they're going to want to know whether or not they have the item or you have the item in inventory. Now, if you don't show up in the first page of a Google search, people don't think you exist. If you don't at least show up, they also, but if they find you just one time, they might think, may or may not know exactly what you're doing in business. If you dominate, that means all 10 organic search results are you, all of a sudden that you've elevated yourself and they see you as an expert in your field, which it doesn't matter whether we have champagne dreams and a beer budget. We all want to work with experts. We don't want somebody who was or who used to be good. We want somebody who's an expert, the most affordable expert that we can get a hold of. But we still want them to be good, right? So as we look here, let me take you in to show you our first video. Remember what I said about audio changing now? So if it goes dead in audio, know that that's what's happened. I'm going to show you a video and understand if my face is blocking everything that you can drop and drag me and, and, and actually minimize that. So some people, depending on your device, sometimes my camera shows up as a separate window and you can just move that along so you can see the video. Okay, let me bring you into the video real quick. Hold on. Right. How many of us have had that 
I don't even know what to do next moment. I know I have three times. I'm a mom of three boys. And so I've definitely had that moment over and over again. And I know that people have shifted in the way they change. I explained to you in the way they shop and that has changed because I explained to you how my father, who's even 86 years old, when his favorite chair broke, he looked for that amazing brand that he loved and see who carried it locally, then who also did local delivery. And then he read their online reviews and that's who he decided to do business with. So today we're gonna to talk about how Google search works because it's really important that you understand that. Google is the number one search engine in the world and YouTube is number two. It's the number two search engine in the world and YouTube's also the one number one social network in the world. Yes, it beats TikTok, just barely, but it beats TikTok. So it's really important for us to understand how search works so we can show up when people are looking for our product, service, or solution. And then also I will touch briefly on search engine optimization. Understand I can do a whole week's course on SEO, search engine optimization, the basics that I'm gonna show you. And what you need to know is if the search engine can't see you, it cannot show you to people who are searching for your product or your service. And then also how to create a business profile. I'll touch on this briefly. That really was session one that we went and did a deep dive in yesterday when we talked about get your local business on Google search and maps. Now I will also touch briefly on amplifying with online advertising. Everything that I'm talking about today is free except for this section. There is a little bit of pay but I'm going to talk to you about how you can use it for free. All right so I'll walk you through real quickly but I'll talk to you how you can use some of the aspects and the functions of Google ads for free and I always end with a recap, a call to action of what you're actually going to do and apply and then free resources. All right. Deal everybody, everybody find the question box. Let's go ahead in and get started. All right, how does Google search work? And if you want a copy of today's slides, all you need to do is put the number one, I'm sorry, not the number one, let me go back, number two, the number two in the question box and you'll get a copy of today's slides. Remember 24 hours later, because it takes that long and I send it together with the actual recording. So how does Google search work? Well, we know when we're typing things in, you can use the URL, which is the address bar at the very top, or you can type here in Google search, whatever you're searching for. Or nowadays, we do a lot of voice search and that's not going away. And we'll say, hey, Google, hey, Alexa. I'm sure I probably activated somebody's <laughs> tool right then and there, but do know that you can do that and now it starts searching. So the first thing that happens, the search results page, this is what it looks like. Your text ad is usually on top. If there's photos above it, those are Google shopping ads. I'll tell you how to use those when we get to the learn um, how or the using online or e-commerce tools is the session. So it's using um, e-commerce tools to be able to grow your business. Then you've got 10 organic search results. So when you hear me say 10 organic search results, this is the spot I'm telling you right here. Now, if you want me to show you what people are searching for your business right now, I'll show you that towards the end when we get into Q&A. That's for all of the those of you who are staying here live. I'll show you how to do that and it's something that you're going to love because it's easy and simple and you don't have to pay for it. And then of course there's that text ad which is denoted with a little ad. Usually it's a little green box around it too. And you see how that business profile that we talked about in session one of boot camp just hangs out there on that right hand side with a lot of good visual real estate. Okay. So behind the scenes, what happens is when somebody's searching, Googlebot goes out there and starts looking for that information, trying to match, be relevant to what somebody's looking for. So Google's algorithm is built on three pillars. Number one is relevance. We talked about that quite a bit yesterday. How relevant, how well do you match to what somebody is actually typing and looking for? That's why it's so important for us to understand the words our customers use and how they search. We need to be experts on our customers. But also part two of that is your prominence score. That is your quality score. How well are you responding to reviews? Do you have online reviews? When was the last time you updated your website? When was the last time you uploaded video? All of that and are you connected to other Google tools that can confirm that you are a solid verified business? Therefore, Google now feels more comfortable showing you higher in an organic search just because you are matching and confirming that you are a real business. So that is also at work. The third part is distance. How far are you from the person that's searching? So those three pillars are relevance, distance, and prominence. And those all, each pillar has hundreds of factors that are calculated together to come up with the score or the formula that the algorithm uses to be able to match what somebody is actually searching for. So do keep all of that in mind that that's what's happening behind the scenes with search. 
well, how can you reach customers then? What's the best way to do that? Because we want the search engine to see us. If it can't see us, then it can't deliver us in the results when people are searching. So knowing that, we want to show up in the first 10 organic search results. Just imagine if you showed up there, it was your website, a blog site, your LinkedIn profile, your Instagram profile, maybe you did a ribbon cutting at the Artesia Chamber of Commerce or the Texas Chamber of Commerce or the Greater Houston LGBT Chamber of Commerce. You did a ribbon cutting there, so it's showing up, it's all about you, and that is all pinging and letting the algorithm as well as the searcher know that you know your stuff and that you're a real viable business, okay? So understand it's important that the more horses we can have in this race for visibility, the better. As long as it all leads to our website, we win. So you can see here, for example, how you can even expand out depending on how you set up your site, this will actually show up too. So when we go over that session on make your website work for you, I'll talk to you about how you can use this and really expand out that visual real estate, which really captures more eyeballs. But you can see for Trade Street Jam here exactly how they did that. They're showcasing their products, their gift set, their recipe, and even where to find their actual locations. So SEO makes your website more visible to people and more visible to the search engine. That's really important. Now do understand, if you do not have an HTTPS, so S stands for secure, it's a security certificate, you need to get that from your website hosting company. Sometimes they offer it for free, sometimes you have to pay for it, but it needs to have an HTTPS and your site also has to be mobile friendly, which means I do not have to pinch and zoom to read it or sweep side to side to finish a sentence. Understand that if your site is not mobile responsive and if it's not secure, there is nothing in the world that you can do to make the search engine see you higher on where you actually show up because you are penalized for not being mobile responsive and not having a secure site. So it doesn't matter all the stuff I'm teaching you here today, that is basic to be sure that the search engine sees you and now can deliver you in the search results when somebody's looking. It also helps you connect with customers and it also can increase your potential sales because more eyeballs, more opportunity, right? So as you look here at the bottom left-hand corner, there is an SEO starter guide. I encourage you to visit this URL and download or look at the guide because this will help you be more visible to the search engine. Whether it is Google or any other search engine, now you are seen when people are searching, no matter where they feel comfortable searching okay so if you want to take a screenshot of that for those of you who want a copy of today's slides remember to put the number two in the question box um, oh no worries no worries Monica let's see what was the third of relevance and distance Renee it was prominence so prominence is your quality score that has to do with how often you update your website whether or not your up, your website is organized whether or not you've got good SEO on your website whether or not you've uploaded a video lately to your site if you respond to your reviews, do you have online reviews? So all of that has to do with the prominence score. That's the third part, Renee. So it's relevance, distance, and prominence. Okay, so that's quality score. Often, how often should you update your website? I try to keep it updated as often as possible. Anytime I put new information there, so I have something new to share, I will keep it updated. It's not always the entire site. Sometimes it's just one page, a blog. For me, it's my event page, wherever I put the latest boot camp or the trainings that I'm doing and I'm speaking at for Google. So again, you can do that also with a blog site or maybe a product or service site, or maybe you have a FAQ page of your site too. So what happens? is content is key in search engine optimization. You do have to publish great, relevant content. Google does put a lot of weight in that prominence score that Renee was asking about on making sure that your information is helpful to the person who's searching. More than just the search engine looking and finding information, it's got to be helpful to the end user. This is really important. So when you look at your content, does it match what people are searching for? And when people find it, does your target audience look at it and say, oh my gosh, they get me. They really understand me. So your messaging is going to be different depending on who your target audience is and what is important to them. You're also going to use page titles and descriptions because those rank higher and the algorithm reads those first when we're looking at search engine optimization. So your page titles and descriptions need to match what people are searching for. If you remember from yesterday's training, Google Business Profile Training, I shared with you how that when people were looking for tech support, they were typing in or saying, I hate my computer. So a page title would be, 
have you said you hate your computer today? Is I hate my computer part of your mantra? If I was a tech support company, I would include that in my page title and descriptions. So now I am more relevant and matching what somebody's looking for. But it also needs to be organized. The number one reason people leave a site is because it's disorganized. They can't find anything. And we're all guilty of this as small businesses because we're being butcher, baker, and candlestick maker in our business. And a lot of times we want people to see what we have. So we dump it all on where? The home page. So it looks like a disorganized hot mess. And really it needs to be organized and easy for somebody to be able to see as well as the search engine. Now, one of the ways you can be very relevant to what people are searching for is using Google Trends. How many of you have used Google Trends here? But use just put the letter Y in the question box if you've ever used this before. How do you know what the audience is looking for? So Amy, this is one way through Google Trends. I also encourage you to read your competitors, well read your own reviews if you have your own reviews, Amy. Read that and use the words that they're using because that's what they're searching for and looking for. Plus, I'll show you a little marketer's tip at the end on how you can also check. But also read your competitors' reviews. If you don't have enough reviews yet, look at your competitors or if you don't, your business isn't open yet, your potential competitors. Look there to see what words people are using. But Google Trends is a great tool. Now, Marla with REI knows this is my favorite tool to use in Google. If you go to g.co slash trends, what is so great about Google Trends is it lets you know what people are talking about and searching right now, which means those are where the eyeballs are. I'm a big fan of fish where the fish are. It takes a tremendous amount of time, energy, and money to get people to look over here when they're spending time over here. A lot of times you have to do a lot of heavy lifting to get that to happen, and as small businesses, cash flow is king to us, and we need that to happen more than us just throwing it out there. So it's better for us to match and fish where the fish are. What Google Trends can do for you is first, it can help you find relevant products and actual services. It can let you know what people are searching for. So what I love about Google Trends is if I wanted to know, in Dallas, Texas, what people were searching for, or in Houston, Texas, what people were searching for in the last hour, I can find that out. I can also find out in the last hour what people were searching for on YouTube if I wanted to. So you can also find if there's relevant products or services. For example, I was working with a veterinarian in Corpus Christi, Texas, and he found out that in Corpus Christi that day, the last hour, people were searching for cheapest veterinarian in Corpus Christi. While he was not the cheapest veterinarian, what he did in all his social posts, his blog posts, and a YouTube video that he posted was he talked about the fact that I'm not the cheapest veterinarian in Corpus Christi, but I'm the best if your four-legged family member is just that family and you're interested in safety and care. And then he went through that. So he took advantage of the fact that this is where people were searching and he had this, which wasn't in the exact match. He's not the cheapest, but he was able to be there and capture that those eyeballs, especially if somebody was looking for cheapest and they never looked and considered him, but now they're looking for something else and they find him. Also, you can see exactly what the seasonal trends are too. So you see that happening. You've got topics and seasonal trends. Maybe during the summertime, people are searching for something else and they're not searching specifically for some of the words you normally use when you're posting on social. It's good for keyword research. It's really helpful. It helps you keep the content fresh to. If you've ever woke up in the morning and wonder, what am I going to post today? What am I going to do a story on? What's this TikTok going to be about? Find out what people are actually interested in and monitor competitors too. So now when we talk about content freshness and even in decision making, we were working with a pizza Ria, so a pizzeria that he actually believed that he needed to be able to lower his price and provide more variety of pizzas. So he was going to do a pineapple pizza and um, he was going to lower his price because he thought that was going to get more foot traffic and people interested in his pizzeria. What he found was in his area, what people were searching for was farm to table vegetables. They were looking at the local farmer's market. So he took that information and he decided, you know what, I'm not in Hawaii, so pineapple is not native or local for us, but I will go to two local farmers. I will get their vegetables and I will do business with them and I will showcase and highlight the fact that I have local veggies on my pizza. I will not lower my price, but I will show how I support and I'm a part of this local community. Remember what I said about where people are looking, matching that. So now you can find out where people are looking. And I love to do that. You can also monitor your competitors. So this is my first thing every morning. You know, I get my coffee cup and I go into Google Trends. 
I put in the competitors of other businesses or that particular business that I'm looking at or coaching with that day. And I look at it and I like to see what are people searching for to find the competitors. And now let's do that. Let's see if we can get some of those competitor eyeballs looking at you. That's really important. You can also see trends in YouTube. So if you're wondering what should be the audio or video for today, maybe you look at there or you wanna know what people are searching. Maybe you're thinking of doing an instructional video and you don't know what people are looking for. You can see what's happening there and you can go back as far as 2004 to really see what has been happening, especially if you have a longer sales cycle. You know, maybe you don't just sell things and have consumables. Maybe it's every three years or house buying. It could be even a longer sales cycle. Okay, so have you seen Google Trends before? Any of you, have you ever used it before? Let me know in the question box. I'd love to see how you uniquely use it. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Let me see if I can go to a live demo here real quick. Okay, so now let me go here. I'm gonna throw up this screen here real quick. All right, this is an incognito. A Chrome browser, g.co slash trends. Hello, I know how to spell. All right, dogs. Whoops, let me make that bigger because I'm broadcasting. Hold on, everybody. Okay, so dogs. Let's say I'm wondering in Houston, Texas. How many have been talking about dogs? See, you can do 12 months, past hour, past four hours. So let me just find out the past four hours. What's top of mind? Ooh, Harden is talking about dogs. Can dogs have blueberries? So if I'm a vet and I'm thinking about it or I have a pet site, can dog have blueberries? Can dog eat strawberries? Can dogs eat apples? So they're really talking about dog diets here. And um, what you can see here is breakout sessions. Those are nice. You can use this for your content. You can even use this for ads because what I love about breakout sessions, it means that people are chatting about it right now, but you're not going to have to spend a lot in cost per click for ads because this has not been recognized as a really popular term yet, but eyeballs are headed there. You can also see like there's a 450% increase of people looking at strawberries, at apples. So you see a lot of different things happening. You can even, let's say we wanna just look at this different community. We can look at the different communities to see how they're doing and get that granular okay so that's google trends one of my favorite tools if you've never used it before i'd love for you to use it and give me feedback and let me know how you use it um let me see oh good i'm carolyn i'm glad you finally found the question box i'm so sorry that's so they keep it so hidden right all right all right notaries in florida oh, amy awesome all right also what's important for the search engine to see you which means for people to find you is how fast or how slow your website is Website speed has a lot to do with this. Understand that if your website doesn't load in four seconds or less on a mobile device, four seconds or less, you will lose over half, 53% of your traffic. And for every second over that, you'll lose another 10%. So you could be working your butt off, posting on here in social, doing a TikTok or an Instagram reel, and you're sending everybody to your site. But if it takes longer than four seconds, you'll lose over half, and then you'll lose more as it takes longer. We are all about instant gratification. Speed is everything. And on your site, it needs to load fast on a mobile device. It needs to be seen by all browsers and devices. So you heard me say that it has to be mobile responsive. If I have to pinch and zoom on any device, then I'm gonna go down to the next competitor. There's many more people in the search results that I can set, spend my money on. And then also, I'm going to share with you a resource that you can use and how you can be seen more. So first is test my site. If you go here, go to the lower left, look to the lower left and see that URL, g.co slash test my site. Go ahead and go to that site and put your site URL, your domain name in there and find out how fast or slowly it actually loads on a mobile device. Let me know in the question box. I would love to know whether or not you are loading in four seconds or less. Some of you may be really fast at doing that. Some of you may be slower. What I love about this tool, I re remember it's 100% free here. So this is a free tool. And what's nice about it is it will let you know what's slowing down your site and also how to fix it. So for example, my sons, I told you I have three sons that I work with and I, I just forward the report to them and say, here, here, go ahead and fix that. That's as technical support as I get. So this is a great way for you to find out whether or not your site is slow or fast. Now understand I work in international e-commerce, so I do understand Shopify really, really well. It's one of the best tools that are CMS, content management system is what CMS stands for. So Shopify, Wix, WordPress, Squarespace, um, trying to think big commerce, all WooCommerce, all of those are what's known as CMS, content management systems. 
Shopify is wonderful, but some of the themes, the designs to just make Shopify beautiful take 3.8 seconds to load, 3.8 seconds. So imagine now you're gonna put your content, your photos, your videos, and all of that is slowing down the load time of your site. Remember, four seconds or less, or you'll lose over half, 53% of your traffic. Woo, all right, 2.2 seconds, you win, Amy. 2.2 is good, it's good, good, good. Slower is even better. I was working with an e-commerce site this morning and we got them down to 1.8 seconds and they're in e-commerce, which means they have pictures and photos and videos on there. So they got it down to 1.8 seconds. Faster is always better. So if you see things that they suggest you improve there, then I highly recommend that you improve those there, okay? Yep, how come? It says you need improvement because there might be some things slowing you down that can make you even faster. When it's faster, people will spend more time looking at your site than looking at the little spinning thing as it's loading. That's why it's better. So just look and see what could be slowing it down. It could be some simple fixes. They'll send you a report of exactly what's slowing it down and how to fix it. Now, remember when I told you about the search engine going out and looking for you for Google Bot, but we small businesses cannot just wait for Google Bot to be in charge of whether or not somebody's gonna find us and do business with us. We have to take ownership and take responsibility for our own business. And the way when I know people are not doing that, they'll say things like, I don't know why Google can't find my site. I don't know why I don't show up in the first page of search. I have no idea why they're showing this old information when I've got new information out there. That's an old site or that's an old blog post. Well, this is why. This is Google Search Console. Now, a lot of people believe that Google is the World Wide Web, and that is not true. It is the biggest library, right, Samantha, of the World Wide Web. So actually, we've got here with Denton Public Library, I'll, I'll give a shout out to, uh, to Casey. So Casey, it's the World Wide Web. So it is a, not the World Wide Web, it's the library of the World Wide Web. And because it's the library of the World Wide Web, you are responsible for putting your book in the library. If you remember back in the days of old when we go into a library, not just searching on a computer, you go to a card catalog, everything was arranged by Dewey Decimal System, it was categorized, and then we would find out exactly the number, the category, and we would go out to the stacks and find the books. Well, Googlebot is doing the same thing. It is trying to find your book, managing your website's a book, and it's one paragraph or one sentence of the last paragraph on the page of your book. But have you entered your book in the library? Have you entered it into Google Search Console because a lot of businesses just wait for Google Bot to find you. And I don't have that kind of time and the businesses that I work with don't have that kind of time. Cash flow is king, right? We want the search engine to see us right away. So we take responsibility and go to this URL, g.co slash search console, and we enter our book. And we make sure instantly, when we publish online, instantly, you make that change that we were talking about earlier, you update a blog post, instantly we go to Google Search Console and push it forward so that Google sees it instantly. We take responsibility in charge of our online reputation and visibility by using Google Search Console. So have you entered your book into the library? Now, go out there and go search yourself and see where do you show up? What's appearing? What actually does show up? And is it really what you want to be the first impression somebody has of your business, okay? Any questions before we go from here? 1.8, all right, Eastern Federal Credit Union, that's awesome, especially since I know a lot of credit unions have like calculators that they work with and such, that's awesome. 3.6, yep, no worries. You are still under the four seconds, so you're good, but if you could get it even faster, the better, because then people will spend more time consuming your content. Now, yesterday, for those of you who were here yesterday, we took a deep dive into creating your business profile. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here, but for those of you who were not here yesterday for session one, not to worry, the business profile used to be known as Google My Business, GMB, Google Listing. In January, it changed its name to Google Business Profile. It has nice prime real estate visual here on the right-hand side when people are searching. I encourage you to claim it because this can help you really get some good visibility and it is hyper local focus too. So this is how you get there. You go to google.com slash business and that will help you be able to control your hours of operation, what people see, your offers, your events, and anything new about your business that you want to share with the public and they will find that in search and maps. You can include photos and videos. You can even set up booking depending on the category you choose. You might be able to connect your booking system with it directly. Some people like restaurants especially will do that because they want people to be able to just in less clicks be able to come over and to consume their food you can also do updates like posts where you can look at reviews and read your reviews and respond to your reviews remember what I said yesterday everybody 97% of businesses do not say thank you for a good review 
So just say thank you and you're already at the top 3%, but there are other ways you can also respond to your reviews, especially even if you get negative ones. So if you want me to slow down and cover that, let me know in the question box. And then of course there's messaging. If you were not here yesterday for that session, not to worry. If you've got questions, let me know in the question box. So if you go to google.com slash business, then you can claim or complete your business profile here. And this is actually the steps that'll happen. So if you've not done this, if you want to screenshot this, because again, it's going to be 24 hours before you get a copy of the recording and the slides. So you might want to take care of this and be what you want to apply from what you learned today already here. But if you've got questions, let me know. Now, Remember what I said about advertising, there is a fee for that because of course you've got ad spend, but I'm going to show you some of the things you can use for free. But let me walk you through the process because Google Ads will help you amplify your business. And that is a note right there that we are going to a video. So let me bring up Trade Street Jam. Everybody likes jam. Who doesn't like jam? Seriously, I dream about flavors. Trade Street Jam Company makes low sugar vegan jams. Let me see if I can. We might be having internet moments. Let me try again. Um, hold on, everybody. Everybody likes jam. Who doesn't like jam? Seriously, I dream about flavors. Trade Street Jam Company makes low sugar vegan jams for pretty much everything under the sun. Honey, do you know? Everybody likes jam. Who doesn't like jam? Seriously, I dream about flavors. Trade Street Jam Company makes low sugar vegan jams for pretty much everything under the sun. Honey, do you know how many? Okay, everybody, let me come back on. Hold on. Coming back on. Um, so something's laggy and I don't like that experience for you. So what I will do is I will go ahead and just summarize real quick, but I will send you a link to this video when I do send a copy of the recording. Okay. Um, so what this is trade street jam. She actually started her business right before everything happened in 2020. And so she had to quickly shift and she utilized Google ads to help promote her business. She's a small business owner who is a mom also, and really she's just enjoyed the opportunity to see her jams just be highlighted now and really has quadrupled her business. Now, one of the things I love to share about her story and the why I like to share her story is because perhaps you have a story. And if you have a story about how you've used any of the Google tools and it's helped you grow your business, reach out to me, reply to the email that you get from me when I do send you the recording and the slides, because maybe I can share that story with the Google team. I actually do share a lot of stories with them. And I've had two out of the Ada, Oklahoma area that have actually been highlighted on Google's site because they saw such great interest and excitement within their story, they were able to do that. Now, can you imagine the good search engine optimization juice that you get and visibility that you get if you're featured on Google site? So just keep that in mind. I would love to hear your story. Partners, if you have any of your members or people of your local community share a story with you, please pass it along to me because I'd love to do that and say, hey, that video, I was the person who introduced the Google team to that. So happy to share that with the rest of the team. Now, what you can see is that ads do actually appear on partner websites. So you can see that actually happen. A lot of times you can control, especially if you know what your target audience is, you can let Google ads know a little bit more about that. But you can find out all about ads here at that, local, that URL at the bottom left-hand corner. Smart campaigns is where we all start. So that is by default when you're starting ads for the first time, when you go to that URL that I'm showing you here, g.co ads. You'll start with short, smart campaigns. In smart campaigns, this is what's very important. You need to know what your goal is. If you don't know what your goal is, you will waste a lot of time and money, okay? So the goal is very important and smart campaigns will actually walk you through it. It's pretty intuitive. We call it the ad libs of, or mad libs of ads because you just truly fill in the blank as you go through here. 
So you'll see you drop right away when you set up a smart campaign into choosing one of these three goals. You really need to know what your goal is. I was sharing yesterday that I work with a lot of service-based industries and because of that, like heating and air conditioning, if it goes out today, it's 102 degrees in Midland, Texas, and somebody's gonna call somebody. They're not just gonna go to a website and hope somebody looks at their website and inquiry. They're going to wanna make a call and say, hey, make my house cool now. So getting more calls might be exactly what you're looking for, or it could be that you want people to come to your website and to sign, th and sign up for things or you want them to come to your physical location. So you really want that foot traffic in. You're a bar, you're a salon, you're a restaurant, you're a movie theater, you're a store. Now you can bring in information from your Google business profile that you've already set up, or you cannot want to use that information and put in your own info. You put your business name in, you can even use the name that most people know you about, even if it's not your official name, and then you can use your website. Okay, this is where people make a big mistake in ads they put the home page of their website. For a moment, I want you to think about what is the goal of your ad and what are you promoting there? What do you want people to do afterwards for them, for you to feel successful that this ad has performed the way you want it to, okay? Do not take them to your home page if your ad says, hey, we've got some great heirloom tomato recipes for you to see. Because if your home page is about how to grow tomato seeds, all different kinds of tomatoes. Now they have to sift through all of that. Understand you're just now building trust and trust is built by doing what you say you're gonna do. If I'm gonna take you to the heirloom tomato recipes, then I'll take you there. Once I take you there, now I'm gonna work on earning the right to show you the West, rest of the website, but don't fall into the same trap that so many businesses fall into, which is, oh my gosh, Maria, but I'm excited to just even get their attention, so I want them to see everything that I have. They might like everything. You will overwhelm them and they will leave. Your ad will pay for a click, but they will bounce. So a bounce, what it, that is in Google Analytics and your ads, a bounce rate is when somebody goes to your site, they click through something and they do nothing afterwards for one entire minute after that. So 60 seconds, they do nothing and they leave. That means there's a disconnect between what they found and what they clicked on and what they actually came to on your site. And usually the culprit is the home page because people like to send them there. Don't do it, take them where you told them you're gonna take them. We're earn that trust. Now you can see exactly here what it looks like, what the ad will look like. So you can see it on mobile and on desktop. And now you'll have headlines that you can use too. So you'll see this. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, but you'll see there are different um, characters that you can have, only 30 characters. So it's got to be super brief. You'll also see that keyword themes will show up here because you have chosen your actual business and it's going from the AI, Google's experience with that industry and that business. So you can X that out if fruit jam's not your thing and maybe it's all fruit strawberry jam is more your thing, okay? So maybe if somebody is, let's say you have a spice shop and people are looking for Walmart spices, that's not your best customer. So you just wanna click that off. You don't wanna pay when somebody clicks on Walmart or when they're searching for a Walmart spices, but you would like to, to um, to be able to be found when somebody looks at specialty spices or local spice shop. You can also decide to advertise near your address or within specific zip codes, cities, or regions. So you can put that in too. And now this is the big thing. You'll hear me talk about this and learn the basics of Google Ads. I'm a big fan of using whatever Google recommends because I'm not a set it and forget it gal. I'll go three days like this and I'll go back and measure because if you're not measuring, you're not marketing. One dollar or one minute spent that's not lifting the bottom line or getting you closer to your goal is one dollar or one minute spent too much. So I will look at this and if that's not working, I will adjust. So I will talk about that when we talk about learn the basics of Google Ads, how you make that decision on what to adjust. Understand that I have taken care of and actively am taking care of about a $50,000 a month ad budget and started with just $300 a month ad budget. So I know how to adjust to get the most bang for your buck. Now you're gonna review the ad, look in case you have any typos and then after that, now you have the chance to launch it and you'll have a chance to start looking through and measuring whether or not there are some keywords that you don't wanna pay for when people click on, or you might wanna see when's the best time when people are shopping. You might even want to edit or pause and add and truly see how it's performing. All right, so let me show you what's free within Google Ads. Let me go here real quick, hold on. Um, I'm gonna to have to bring up my actual URL, hold on. I've just incognito. And I can show you, there we go, g.co slash ads, okay. 
I will show you something so you can see it real quick. Oh. Okay, I'll show you this one real quick. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Pull this out, hold on. There we go, everybody. Thanks for bearing with me. All right, so this is what it looks like when you land in Google Ads, all right? So when you're in Google Ads, um, you're going to, you can even sign up for Google Ads and not put your credit card. You will get to this basic site. It will try to push you to put your credit card, just ignore that. But you can go here to tools and settings and you're looking for in the first column if you have no ads you're just going to have one column there but you're going to look for keyword planner click on keyword planner and now you can discover keywords for free a hundred percent for free everyone that's why i like to use google ads because first when i connect it to everything it's confirming to google yes i'm viable lifting me up higher in search, which is what I love, but I can use the free keywords here. Why pay for something else? I'm familiar with all the other ones like Arefs or um, Ubersuggest or SEM Rush. I love all of those tools too, because there's lots of other robust features they have that Google Keyword Planner doesn't have, but you can use this for free to see what keywords people are searching for. So between this and Google Trends, this is a great way for you to be able to find out exactly what words people are using and match what people are using. But another way that you can see it too, let me see before I go into recap is, uh, bring up, we go. I'm going to bring throw Google Trends back up here. Hold on. And let's see. I'm just going to go straight to Google search. All right. So if somebody wants me to let me know in the question box the name of their business, let me know the name of your business. Know that I am in a Google Chrome browser. It's really important that you're in a Google Chrome browser because not only is it a browser, but it gives you a lot of great marketing insights. Okay. More so than any other browser. But let's say Ladybug Mobile Services. Thank you, Amy. You're on top of that. Ladybug Mobile Services. Okay. All right. Let's toggle on down here. See those related search terms? That's what people are searching for right now. These are popular active searches right now. Everything here in this gray circular box is a potential keyword for you. But let's say yours is specific to Ladybug right now. So I'm just gonna say mobile services. Where are you located at, Amy? Mobile services. Um, I can't remember where you told me you're at. Florida, okay, Florida. Okay, so I'm just gonna go general to the whole industry of mobile services. This is what people are searching for, but you said notary, right? I'm gonna to go to notary. Let me get even more specific. Mobile, oops, mobile notary services, Florida. This is what people are searching for right now. Those are hot keywords right now. You do have to be in a Google Chrome browser to get these reloaded related Google searches, but you can see what people are actively using these are keywords to use in your post, to use in your descriptions of your YouTube, anything that you're doing. So your YouTube videos that you're uploading, all of this lets you know that, right? Okay, let me see. I see Jessica here, your best Western Pecos in. Western Pecos in. Okay, let's see. Best Western Pecos in. Look at that. Didn't they do a nice job here with their Google business profile? Look at all that real estate it's taking up right there. All right. This is what their people are searching for right now. Okay, so that's active searches, active hot related searches without me even going to g.co slash Google Trends or to slash trends. But let's say hotels in Artesia. Hmm, yeah, I'm gonna try Artesia. Let me go specific. This is what they're looking for right now. Look at that pet friendly hotel in Artesia, New Mexico. If I was a pet friendly hotel, guaranteed I'm gonna be doing a post, a video, maybe even a short. Probably we'll put something on Instagram Reels because this is hot right now, okay? Uh, Lenora Stein Photography, let me help you out here. We'll do one more. Lenora Stein Photography, okay. Did I, did I separate that? I can't see. 
my camera's in the way. Lenora Stein. Did I make a space there? A Stein, yeah. Photography. I just want to make sure. Oh, yeah, look, I got to the right place. Look at that. Look at your beautiful Google business profile, Lenora. Awesome. All right, look at that. Oh, but too specific. So let's talk about photography. Where are you located at, Lenora? You're in uh, Montgomery, no, Spring, Texas. Okay, photography, Spring, Texas. This is what people are looking for right now, okay? So they're looking for family photos and professional pictures. People may be looking for headshots. Maybe they graduated and they're still looking for work, so they're wanting to make sure they've got something ready just in case they need a professional headshot, all right? Or they just started a new job and they need a professional headshot for their place to be shown as a new team member, okay? So see how you can utilize that. Just make sure you're in a Google Chrome to do that, all right? So let's recap. We know that you appear on three ways in Google, on a text ad, organic search results, and also business profile. Now, if you'll hang with me to the end, I will, when I go off recording, showcase how you can see what the library, what Google Search Console sees about you, whether or not the library actually sees or the Google search engine actually sees everything on your site. I can show you that too. If you'll hang out with me and you put your business in the, um, in the um, chat or the question box, I want to call it a chat box so bad, but in the question box, then I'll show you how you actually appear in Google Search Console. But we do know that it's text ads, organic results, and above that, if you see photos, that's actually shopping ads, and then your nice, prominent Google business profile to the right. We also talked about these tools that can help you in optimizing and being seen by the search engine. This helps you be found on Google Search and Maps and control all of your information across all devices on Search and Maps, and ads can help you amplify that. I would not use ads other than the free keyword planner until you've gotten all these other two items in place first. Because understand that all ads do in any tool that you're using, all ads ever do is amplify. So if you don't know who your target audience is, you don't know what your brand is or what you wanna promote, you have no idea what your goal is, all you're gonna do is promote chaos and you'll spend a lot of money doing that. So don't do any of that until you've got all of that straight. Now, this is the money slide, so I'm going to move my little laser pointer out of the way there. If you want to take a screenshot of this before you get a copy of today's slides and recording, you're welcome to do that. This is every website and tool I mentioned to you from the very beginning, the SEO starter guide to everything else. It's all right here in one shot, so that's why I call it the money slide. It's everything for you to take action and apply your knowledge right away. All right. Of course, if you want to continue your education, we've got Google on air. Every quarter we do cover everything that is trending right now and of important to, importance to small business. I'm trying to say it all together, just go right here to g.co slash grow on air and you can find out what the next topic is that's coming this next quarter. And of course, you can download Google's Primer ad app. So this Primer app is free to use. You can get it on the Apple Store so or also Google Play, which is Android. And there's lots of C mini courses already in there and they're updating this all the time. So even though all my degrees are in marketing, I still have Google Primer because I'm always learning and I love to get things up to date and share those with you whenever I'm in training. I always test them out too. So I will use myself as a guinea pig before I go to show you guys what's the best thing. So you know everything that I do is pretty vetted here. And then if you're not familiar with this, these are the scholarships that I mentioned yesterday. There is career certificates that you can secure for data analytics, IT support, which are great. But the one that I want to really draw your attention to is digital marketing and e-commerce because during Small Business Month, Google actually announced that they're going to do scholarships, free scholarships for this, for any business that has an EIN number. So if you've got an EIN number, you and your entire team, so our entire team of 15 is all going through this and we're doing it 100% free through scholarships, go here to this URL to find out the information and then you can find out how you can apply for this, but it's only going to be available till December, <clears throat> excuse me, 2023. So. It is, I mean, I know that feels like it's a long ways away, but come on, <clears throat> it's gonna be August next month, right? Okay, so let's go in here now. If you want to learn anything else about what your Google partner can provide you or what they can ask me to come back and train, you can do that here, but understand, <coughs> excuse me, the first thing, first order of business is really figuring out, excuse me, <coughs> I breathed in dust. I live in West Texas but is to really think about what do you need to take action on? What's gonna make the time we spent here today, the 60 minutes to you, more of an investment than an expense? 
So what is it that you're going to do? I'd love to hear in the question box to know a little bit more, okay? And again, thank you to our Google partners. They're the ones, if you have any questions after today that I don't answer for you, they're the ones to reach out to because they do really care about whether or not you succeed. They're there in your local community and they have the team to help you. Plus they have access to the Google team just like I do, okay? And they can always reach out to me. So please feel free to reach out to them. All right, before we wind things up and we go into a, a live Q&A and I turn off that recording, and I can show you guys even what Google's library sees about you, the Google Search Console. Let me make sure that you guys know the next boot camp, tomorrow's boot camp, is Make Better Business Decisions with Analytics. So we're covering, covering that same time as today. So make sure you sign up for that. And if you don't know how to sign up, get with the Google partner that invited you. And then we're going to go to Q&A. So let me go ahead and turn off the recording. Remember, 